What is up guys and welcome back to another episode of Inspired By. My name's Will and I make an assortment of music under the moniker Hush Child. In today's episode, I want to utilize quite a few instruments, but without sacrificing the space in your mix. Let's dive into it. Okay, so in today's episode, we've gone into kind of a niche corner of UK Garage. If you've heard of the artists Tough Jam or Wide Boys, um, or if you regularly listen to Rinse FM, you're probably going to be right at home here. But if you're just kind of jumping into the UKG scene, this is also a great place to start. And I have a few other videos on UK Garage on the channel as well. Let's just kick things off with our drum group. And this is what we're starting with. Awesome stuff. So it shouldn't be anything surprising just yet. I'm starting things off with this quite hard hitting trap or drill kick. And in a lot of newer UKG, I'm hearing this harder hitting kick in the track. If we just take a classic UKG kick and listen to it in the mix. It's not quite as impactful as the kick we had before. But with using a kick that is so full of character, you want to just trim it back a little bit. So to do that, you want to preserve those transients, set this mode to the forward mode and bring that envelope back to 50. It's going to be on warp and beats. With the EQ8, I'm just taking out some of those mid to high frequencies as well. So it's a little bit warmer. This is our classic two step pattern. We have an on beat on the down beat and then we have an off beat to follow. This is going to play after the third down beat. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So it's a very push-pull rhythm. Down to the snares, we're getting a little bit busier now. So let's start with the main snare and just keep it really simple for now. We've got two layers here, but once again, we want those garage sounds to be short and sharp. So you can see here with the first snare, I'm actually cutting a lot of the character off from the initial transient and just having some tail there. With the second snare, I'm doing a similar thing to what we did with the kick, preserving those transients and bring the envelope back to 38. Both of these snares have been pitched up by a semitone as well, just to make it a little bit tighter. And of course, I'm using utility here to put the snares into mono. That gives a nice thick layer, but I've also added this dynamic clap here. What do I mean by that? Well, it's just a clap that falls on every other snare with a line delay to make it wider and just the outer space preset on the reverb there. And this is just going to help those snares sound a little bit more dynamic. You've got a dry snare and then you've got another one that kind of drifts off into the background. I'll show you what I mean. It's very subtle, but it will add just a little bit more impact to the movement of your track. And then getting a little bit more movement, we've got these rim shots here. That's what the pattern looks like. And there's two main things that you want to do to get a similar characteristic. First of all, you want to be really picky with the type of rim shots you're using. This is what it sounded like initially. See how there's too much body to some of those rim shots. They don't sound like they come from the same family. With a lot of the rim shots, we're pitching them up a couple of semitones and pulling that envelope all the way down to zero. That's going to make sure that they sound nice and tight. With other rim shots, we're just taking that fade all the way to the start. So again, we're kind of just hearing that initial transient. The second thing that you'll want to do is once inside the piano roll, choose a groove that makes this pattern a little bit more skippy or a little bit more shuffled. What I mean by that is before we add a groove, it sounds like this. With the groove, it sounds like this. It's going to give that intense shuffly garage groove. And then we're going to move on to the hi-hats, which I haven't used the groove on. These mix of 808 and 909 samples are just playing a kind of boots and cats offbeat pattern with the closed hi-hat just falling a little bit before the open hi-hat every now and then. Doing something interesting with these hi-hats, using the drum rack, but haven't really manipulated the samples. EQ8 here to roll off any of the muddy notes and this little harmonic that I didn't like here. But the vinyl distortion is going to add just a little bit more of that vinyl crackle, that lo-fi sound. They're a little bit brighter beforehand. Super subtle, but adds more of that kind of pirate radio feel to our track. Every now and then, I'm just adding a little Oliver tambourine that I haven't manipulated or even EQ'd. 
And that's just going to add a little sparkle to our percussion section, something for the listener to hold on to. We've got two types of crashes. This orchestral Lex crash is going to work really great on the first downbeat. Super high pass there, but then we've got more of a disco crash the second time. It's shorter and really captures the delay. We've got that on a ping pong delay. Helping the loop is just this impact noise, which we've got reversed at the end of the bar and then playing forward at the start of the bar. Really just helps the track move forward and adds that kind of up and down dynamic to the movement of the piece. Let me pause the video there real quick to tell you about today's sponsor, which is of course DistroKid. I love using DistroKid. I've used them for years and they help me get my music onto hundreds of music platforms. One of the things that I really benefit from in DistroKid's website is the special access tab. Special access gives me you've guessed it, access to Spotify artists, Apple Music for artists, and a bunch more, including Tidal artist payments. It means you can opt in to let your fans support you directly on Tidal Hi-Fi Plus. They're a wonderful service and they make it so easy to find a wider audience for your music. I do hope you'll join me on DistroKid. And if you want to get 7% off your first year, then just use the link in the description below. Let's get back to the video. Okay, so that's our drum groove and I'm happy with that. Everything's sounding really nice, really dynamic, but now we're moving on to the basses. This is what we've got from our bass group. Fantastic stuff. It's a really dirty, grimy kind of bass line, this one. We're going to start off with a really easy serum preset. We're actually using five serum presets that I'll list as we go along. A lot of them I'm getting from Splice and just manipulating a little bit. So what we've got for our first bass is this Reese top sound. This is just kind of your standard Reese bass sound. And I'm just playing these short, sharp notes. So we're not getting a long droney sound. We're pitching the first oscillator down at minus two and the second oscillator down at minus one. They're both on 16 with a little bit of detune there. And we're using the MG low filter, but mainly for the drive to just add a little bit more presence to this Reese bass sound, a fair bit of distortion with the mix on about 30%. You can hear a little bit of glide there and possibly a little bit of reverb coming from our bass group too. Our second sound is that classic ring modulated kind of bass sound. Also playing on the downbeat, but playing a different pattern at the end of the bar. It's a little bit clicky this one, but you don't really hear it inside the track. This is our ring modulated preset. And the only thing that I'm kind of manipulating from this preset is just kind of the attack and the filter a little bit, but everything else from the preset can be found at Splice. Just type in this name there from Super Mellow Wob. Now, the cool thing about these two basses is that they, they're going to be playing together. There's going to be a lot of overlap. Basically, I wanted the first bass to play and be quite busy. And then next time we hear the ring modulated bass, that takes over the lead role. But the problem is, is that they both play together. So how do you make sure that there's still space in the mix without having these basses just fight for attention and you know take over your whole project? Well, with the first bass, we're using the EQA and I have rolled off the lows a little bit. And we have made sure that this first bass is a little less wide than the second bass. Now we've got this second EQ8 here and I want you to pay attention to node one with the gain grayed out. With the second wob, what we're using is the EQ8 and we're just rolling off a little bit of the highs. I didn't really like this frequency frequency here. It's a little bit too clicky. But you can see that we've got the envelope follower here. Now with the envelope follower, you can click map, map will flash, and then you can assign that to a pot anywhere in Ableton. I set the envelope follower to 50% and then 0%. This means when you map it to a gain pot in EQ8 for shadowing, it's going to duck that frequency with the gain. So I clicked map here, waited for it to flash, and then I went up to serum and chose the gain pot of this EQ8. It means every time the below bass plays, it's stuck in all of the low frequencies of the bass above. But anytime the bass above plays on its own, it's not ducked by the bass below. So it's a really terrific way to carve out some space when you maybe want to have the brighter texture of one bass, but the lower texture of another or vice versa. From there, we're going to move on. And our track is quite empty so far, even though we've got two busy basses playing. 
So what we want to do is add a nice long drone in the style of a respace. So we've got this new respace here. This is essentially a saw rounded pattern, minus two octaves here. We've got this Reese mess preset from Splice, minus three octaves, and we've got the sub down at minus two octaves as well. Both of these oscillators are being filtered. MG Low 24 is the preset there, and everything is being run through distortion and a little bit of EQ. This gives us this sound. And you can see that this sound is being sidechained by the kick a little bit. So you're getting a little bit of a bounce. We're just selecting the sidechain option, sidechain here, and then audio from kick. Anytime that kick plays, our noise is ducked a little bit. And then just to add a little bit of a new sound, I'm using this bass solid preset, kind of similar to an organ bass and kind of similar to the log drum sound of Amma Piano. Make sure you check out my tutorial on Amma Piano. I've also got some new Afro Beats tutorials coming on the way as well. So with this serum preset, we're getting this sound. Sine wave again, minus two on the octaves, and then this harmonic series preset, minus two on the octaves, detune all the way up on this one here. Very short decay, quick attack, and then effects we're using the compressor and the reverb. This is given the really dark, oppressive tone to our track. Let's combine that with our other basses. So I've chosen that to perform carefully because it's kind of playing in the spaces where this busyness isn't occurring here. So it's just filling in almost like a drum fill, some color into our track. And then our final bass is this almost like jump up drum and bass sound. The only thing that I've changed is the LFO rate and curve here to be set to quarter notes. And then diving into the actual piano roll and clicking envelopes, I'm making sure that it detunes slightly. And again, feels a little bit more dissonant, add into the dark tone of our track. You can hear the reverb coming through on some of these basses, and that's just coming from our group, which is being sent to the first return, which has reverb on it. With this group, we've got the EQ8, just taking off a little bit of the sub frequencies. Then I've got this sub sidechain rack, which is actually something that I picked up from UK bass tutorials. With this rack, you can kind of control the bass frequencies separate to the high frequencies. So with my bass frequencies, I'm just ducking those a little bit. And then you've got an EQ3 that has the highs and the mids turned off, and then in the second envelope here, you're doing the opposite. I've got the lows turned off and then the mids and the highs. It means you can boost those a little bit if you so wish and just kind of control those two frequencies separately. I've got a lot of basses, so it makes sense to have this in my bass group. It's sounding good, but it's still sounding fairly empty. It's lacking color and mood. Let's add that now. So again, another tip from UK Bass Tutorials is having this kind of like latch melody here. I've just got something playing on the offbeat in E here. And then in the group itself, we're just using this very easy saw lead pattern with the drum bus, just adding a little bit of distortion, a little bit of drive here. And then the EQ8 mostly rolling off the lows and getting rid of this really annoying harmonic that was here. That kind of pulls things together a little bit more. It's a constant throughout all of the madness that's going on in your track. But then another kind of mood shifter here is this pattern here. So this plays over and this is just the basic brush bells preset, but I've taken the attack all the way up. We're using the EQ8, again, getting rid of a harmonic of that higher note. And then the auto pan is just gonna help it move around the headphone space a little bit more. This is really just gonna help your track have a little bit more color and life, even if it's really low in the mix. Your listeners will definitely recognize when it's not there. Let's play it with and then without. And take it away. Finally, we have a vocal just to tie everything in place in true UK garage fashion. This is what I initially had. So this was a little bit too worthy. Of course, I've sent it to a return with some reverb and I've just taken out some of the lows and some of the muddy frequencies with the EQ8. I've then chopped up that vocal, pitched it down on top. Here's our regular chopped vocal. 
And then I've also got a delayed vocal too. So with all of these together, this is what we're left with. So that's pretty much it. In the group, I've been using Waves Vocal Rider, which I've been using a ton. It just kind of rides your vocal in real time as if an engineer would, helps kind of bring up some quieter dynamics, or you can set it to pull down the louder dynamics. I'm using the EQ8 just to set those vocals in a similar place, and then the glue compressor just to tidy up any kind of peaky dynamics there. I really enjoyed taking a break from the norm and creating this darker garage vibe, but as always, let me know what you want to see in future episodes and if you want to download the stems from this project then just head over to the patreon thank you so much for stopping by guys and i'll see you next time